Prince of Persia is a 1989 fantasy cinematic platformer originally developed and published by Broterbund and designed by Jordan Mechner for the Apple II. In the game, players control an unnamed protagonist who must venture through a series of dungeons to defeat the Grand Vizier Jafar and save an imprisoned princess. Much like Karataka, Mechner's first game, Prince of Persia used rotoscoping for its fluid and realistic animation. For this process, Mechner used as reference for the character's movements videos of his brother doing acrobatic stunts in white clothes and swashbuckler films such as The Adventures of Robin Hood. The game was critically acclaimed and, while not an immediate commercial success, sold many copies as it was ported to a wide range of platforms after the original Apple II release. It is believed to have been the first cinematic platformer and inspired many following games in this subgenre, such as Another World. Its success led to the release of two sequels, Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame and Prince of Persia 3D, and two reboots of the series, first in 2003 with Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, which led to three sequels of its own, and then again in 2008 with the identically titled Prince of Persia. Plot <inaudible> 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 The game is set in ancient Persia. While the Sultan is fighting a war in a foreign land, his vizier Jafar, a wizard, seizes power. His only obstacle to the throne is the Sultan's daughter although the game never specifically mentions how. Jafar locks her in a tower and orders her to become his wife, or she would die within 60 minutes extended to 120 minutes in the Super NES version, which has longer and harder levels. The game's unnamed protagonist, whom the princess loves, is thrown prisoner into the palace dungeons. In order to free her, he must escape the dungeons, get to the palace tower and defeat Jafar before time runs out. But in addition to guards, various traps and dungeons, the protagonist is further hindered by his own doppelganger, an apparition of his own self that is conjured out of a magic mirror. Gameplay. The main objective of the player is to lead the unnamed protagonist out of dungeons and into a tower before time runs out. This cannot be done without bypassing traps and fighting hostile swordsmen. The game consists of 12 levels though some console versions have more. However, a game session may be saved and resumed at a later time only after level 3. The player has a health indicator that consists of a series of small red triangles. The player starts with 3. Each time the protagonist is damaged, cut by sword, fallen from two floors of heights or hit by a falling rock, the player loses one of these indicators. There are small jars of red potion scattered throughout the game that restore one health indicator. There are also large jars of red potion that increase the maximum number of health indicators by one. If the player's health is reduced to zero, the protagonist dies. Subsequently, the game is restarted from the beginning of the stage in which the protagonist died but the timer will not reset to that point, effectively constituting a time penalty. There is no counter for the number of lives, but if time runs out, the princess will die and the game will be over. There are three types of traps that the player must bypass, spike traps, deep pits three or more levels deep, and guillotines. Getting caught or falling into each results in the instant death of the protagonist. In addition, there are gates that can be raised for a short period of time by having the protagonist stand on the activation trigger. The player must pass through the gates while they are open, avoiding locking triggers. Sometimes, there are various traps between an unlock trigger and a gate. Hostile swordsmen Jafar and his guards are yet another obstacle. The player obtains a sword in the first stage, which they can use to fight these adversaries. The protagonist's sword maneuvers are as follows, advance, back off, slash, parry, or a combined parry then slash attack. Enemy swordsmen also have a health indicator similar to that of the protagonist. Killing them involves slashing them until their health indicator is depleted or by pushing them into traps while fighting. A unique trap encountered in stage 4, which serves as a plot device, is a magic mirror, whose appearance is followed by an ominous leitmotif. The protagonist is forced to jump through this mirror upon which his doppelganger emerges from the other side. This apparition later hinders the protagonist by stealing a potion and throwing him into a dungeon. The protagonist cannot kill this apparition as they share lives, any damage inflicted upon one also hurts the other. Therefore, the protagonist must merge with his doppelganger. 
Once they have merged, the player can run across an invisible bridge to a new area, where they battle Jafar once the final checkpoint is reached, the player will no longer get a game over screen even if time runs out, except if the player dies after the timeout. Once Jafar is defeated, his spell is broken and the princess can be saved. In addition, the in-game timer is stopped at the moment of Jafar's death, and the time remaining will appear on the high scores. Development Development for the game began in 1985, the year Jordan Mechner graduated from Yale University. At that time, Mechner had already developed one game, Karataka, for distributor Broderbund. Despite expecting a sequel to Karataka, the distributor gave Mechner creative freedom to create an original game. The game drew from several sources of inspiration beyond video games, including literature such as the Arabian Nights stories, and films such as Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Adventures of Robin Hood. Mechner used an animation technique called rotoscoping, with which he used footage to animate the character's sprites and movements. To create the protagonist's platforming motions, Mechner traced video footage of his younger brother running and jumping in white clothes. To create the game's sword fighting sprites, Mechner rotoscoped the final duel scene between Errol Flynn and Basil Rathbone in the 1938 film The Adventures of Robin Hood. Though the use of rotoscoping was regarded as a pioneering move, Mechner later recalled that, When we made that decision with Prince of Persia, I wasn't thinking about being cutting edge, we did it essentially because I'm not that good at drawing or animation, and it was the only way I could think of to get lifelike movement. Also unusual was the method of combat, protagonist and enemies fought with swords, not projectile weapons, as was the case in most contemporary games. Mechner has said that when he started programming, the first ten minutes of the film Raiders of the Lost Ark had been one of the main inspirations for the character's acrobatic responses in a dangerous environment. For the Japanese computer ports, Arsis Software and Riverhillsoft enhanced the visuals and redesigned the prince's appearance, introducing the classic turban and vest look. This version became the basis for the Macintosh version and later Prince of Persia ports and games by Broderbund. Riverhillsoft's FM Towns version also added a Red Book CD audio soundtrack. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ports. After its release on the Apple II, Prince of Persia was ported to a variety of platforms. Below is a list of the ports that were developed. Topic. Reception Despite a positive critical reception, Prince of Persia was initially a commercial failure in North America, where it had sold only 7,000 units each on the Apple II and IBM PC by July 1990. It was when the game was released in Japan and Europe that year that it became a commercial success. In July 1990, the NEC PC 9801 version sold 10,000 units as soon as it was released in Japan. It was then ported to various different home computers and video game consoles, eventually selling 2 million units worldwide by the time its sequel Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame 1993, was in production, and more than 2 million copies by 1999. Charles Ardai of Computer Gaming World stated that the game packages claim that it breaks new ground with animation so uncannily human it must be seen to be believed," was true. He wrote that Prince of Persia, "...succeeds at being more than a running jumping game in other words, a gussied up Nintendo game," because it "...captures the feel of those great old adventure films," citing Thief of Baghdad, Frankenstein, and Dracula. Ardai concluded that it was "...a tremendous achievement." In gaming comparable to that of Star Wars in film, in 1991, the game was ranked the 12th best Amiga game of all time by Amiga Power. In 1992, the New York Times described the Macintosh version as having brilliant graphics and excellent sound. Sure, you could do all this years ago on a Commodore 64 or Atari 400. But those games never looked or sounded like this. Reviewing the Genesis version, GamePro praised the extremely fluid animation of the player character and commented that the controls are difficult to master but nonetheless very effective. Comparing it to the Super NES version, they summarized that the Genesis version has better graphics, and the SNES has better music. 
Otherwise, the two are identical in almost every way. Electronic Gaming Monthly (EGM) likewise assessed the Genesis version as an excellent conversion of the classic action game, and added that the game's challenging strategy and technique give it high longevity. EGM's panel of four reviewers each gave it a rating of 8 out of 10, adding up to an overall score of 32 out of 40. In 1991, PC format named Prince of Persia one of the 50 best computer games ever, highlighting its unbelievably good animation. In 1996, Computer Gaming World named Prince of Persia the 84th best game ever, with the editors calling it an acrobatic platformer with amazingly fluid action. <laughs> Legacy Prince of Persia would go on to influence cinematic platformers such as Flashback as well as action-adventure games such as Tomb Raider, which used a similar control scheme. A few DOS games were created using exactly the same game mechanics of the DOS version of Prince of Persia. Mach Shivet created Cruel World in 1993 and Capstone Software created Zorro in 1995. In 2007, Prince of Persia was remade and ported by Gameloft. The remake, titled Prince of Persia Classic, was released on June 13, 2007 to the Xbox Live Arcade, and on October 23, 2008 on the PlayStation Network. It features the same level design and general premise but contained 3D rendered graphics, more fluid movements, and sands of time aesthetics. The gameplay and controls were slightly adjusted to include a wall jump move and different swordplay. New game modes were also added, such as Time Attack and survival. The game has also been released on Android. Reverse engineering efforts by fans of the original game have resulted in detailed documentation of the file formats of the MS-DOS version. Various level editors have been created that can be used to modify the level files of the game. With these editors and other software, over 60 mods have been created. On April 17, 2012, Jordan Mechner established a GitHub repository containing the long thought lost original Apple II source code for Prince of Persia. A technical document describing the operation of this source code is available on Mechner's website. 